Greetings guitarists, I hope you're doing well. This video is really going to be a journey of MIDI controllers and I'm going to talk a little bit about where we come from historically and some of the players. I guess I'll get specifically down to uh, one instrument that I'm considering. The subject of this video is, is the Rob O'Reilly Expressive MIDI Pro 2. Is it really the best MIDI controller out there? And we're starting right now. Uh, so the, this is the, uh, the first guitar synthesizer. This was developed by uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Randall. This is Stephen uh, three years ago. Um, and this is him back in the day. This is about 1976. Um, I think this thing weighed a ton. Uh, it also had its own sounds, um, you know, like, you know, basically, basic MIDI sounds. Uh, like, um, I think that does a flute sound or something like that. But anyway, it's a flute. Yeah, very nice. I hear something that sounds really like an organ. So, it was pretty unique, and uh, it was the first... Uh, Here's a close-up look of how these two sets of, uh, or this set of strings is actually split electronically. So the fingerboard area is different from the strum area. Um, and what they call this was, uh, what they call it? Intelligent frets. Intelligent frets. I'm going to have links to all these videos so you can check this out yourself. But I'm just going to give you a quick run through of kind of like the evolution of the guitar synthesizer. Um, moving forward, I think Roland became pretty involved. I'm not sure how involved they were with the step guitar synthesizer, but uh, pretty revolutionary at the time. And of course, you know, you had the MIDI capabilities. I'm not sure if this had a MIDI out or not, but uh, it had a, definitely had its own sounds. Um, as you can hear. Um, moving forward though, I think Roland had a lot to do with the guitar synthesizer and the one that comes to mind is uh, the one that Pat Metheny had um, and that was the yes, GR you know, yeah. uh, that was uh, G, the GR 300 and that's this one here. Um, he still um, he still uses the same sound and technology. I remember when I first heard it, it was on his uh, Travels album, uh, Live, and, uh, you know, at, at first thought, I, I thought, well, it, what is that, a flugel horn um, or a trumpet? Um, I think uh, Pat's brother, Mike, Mike Matheny? I think Mike Matheny was uh, a trumpet player, so, um, but anyway, it was, uh, pretty pretty amazing um, and Pat has always seemed to use the same kind of sound you can hear a little bit of that he's always managed to use the same sound I know uh, that he probably used uh, other sounds, but he always seemed to stay with this certain one that sounds a, a lot like a, like a flugelhorn, I think. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, later on, and this, I think it was probably about 77 for the, the GR300. Um, Later on, I think probably in, I want to say 1978, uh, Alan Holdsworth um, did a lot, or he had the, what was called the Synthax, and... Create a new tune instantly from it. And then the Synthax was pretty unique. Again, here's that, you know, your, your separated... Uh, plucking or strumming area versus the fingerboard and Alan did uh, I'm not sure gosh 
Um, was it a Tabacron? stuff. Hey, this had a, some unique features on it. Um, it had uh, what Alan used was like a, uh, it's almost like a tube or a breath control device. So you can get a lot of the same kind of dynamics that you would if you're actually playing a horn. Uh, this right here, you had uh, these buttons, almost like a keyboard approach to uh, playing these playing these individual buttons and obviously six for one for each string. Uh, it had a tremolo bar. Um, it was a pretty unique instrument and of course Alan, the, the tracking on it was just flawless. And I, th I think Alan actually tried the, the GR300 and was not happy with it for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it was the tracking, or, but I think it was the syntax that, uh, that he was known for for using anyway so late 80s is what they're claiming but casio did a lot they had the mg510 now it had the same kind of technology as as the uh, gr55 uh which i use you know it's a it was that same midi pickup uh kind of like on the base of the bridge um and let's see if we can get some sounds here but the, the MG510, and, and they've had other models and stuff. Um, let's see if I can hear what this sounds like. Too interesting, but... Yeah, same, same sort of thing. I mean, you had many controls and all that. I think, you know, it probably had the same kind of tracking that the uh, GR55 did. Um, so it was okay, but it, I don't think it was uh, really as, uh, tr the tracking I don't think was, was as good as um, the, uh, the Synthax or the GR300. Uh, even though I think Pat has managed to play pretty well pretty well um, but anyway the the Casio they had a couple different models uh, you can still find some of these it, that, that kind of brings up a question about if you can still find these instruments I think you can find the MG510 on reverb um, I know you can you can't find the Synthax anymore but you can find the Roland uh, GR300 but it's gonna be a pretty penny I think I saw something saw one for like six thousand dollars and I'm like holy moly I think there's a lot um, a lot better choices now uh, and and better technology so anyway but the the Casio stuff wasn't wasn't bad for the time um, Next, let's see. This is uh, this is interesting. I saw this guy. This is the AC pad, and apparently it's something that uh, you attach to uh, your uh, your acoustic guitar. So it had all kinds of gadgets and so on and so forth. This is kind of interesting. Pretty cool sounding. Uh, I think the AC pad 
is no longer available. I don't think the uh, popularity ever caught on with this instrument and um, they pretty much I think they just went out of business uh, which is known to happen to companies that don't catch on. Now there's some other stuff here that's pretty crazy. When I saw this I thought oh my gosh this is ridiculous uh, and the name is great too right um, it's called the Gitorgan yeah I think I'm saying that right Gitorgan and basically it's uh, they they take a cheap guitar and they're well, our cheaper guitar I mean I wouldn't do this to me an Ibanez 175 would be pretty cool to have um, but I mean that's what got me it's like you are totally totally just destroying the instrument just to put an organ in it or which doesn't sound very good um, but yeah look, look at the look at the body all beat up and everything all cut up I don't know how much this thing cost I, I, I wanted to say it was maybe seventeen hundred dollars or something at the time that's of course these prices are, are current to the video but they're always subject to change uh, and get cheaper and all that um, but uh, yeah this is the MCI guitar guitorgan so anyway fat chance now there are some other things I thought this guy's video was funny because he actually started off with I found the worst guitar product ever and I have to agree and this this is the arrow band and <clears throat> I, you know I'm sure it's probably definitely a lot cheaper now but this thing you know was priced at four hundred dollars and I'm thinking wow that's anyway you can check out the link but his they actually had him demo it, you know, and and he, he you know, like he said, I found the worst guitar product ever, and I, I would have to agree. I have the Jammy, uh, that's a digital MIDI guitar. The thing that I'm not crazy about with the Jammy is that there's not enough guitar for me. You know, I, I would want an instrument that is... Uh, you know just as much a guitar as it is having the, the ability to MIDI control everything so just not crazy about it I mean it does a trick if you know if you want something simple to kind of like input uh, input uh, MIDI input data or for your recording and that sort of thing if you got a small studio and, and this might fit the bill for you but for me playing live it's got to be able to do that and uh, just not crazy about the jammy. Uh, there is an instrument, and oh, uh, yeah, the, the the jammy is just over three or something like that. But the next one, the jam stick, um, I actually think that this is uh, let's go pretty good. Um, because you know you get a actual guitar uh, and they got a couple different models um, they have the 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 jam stick MIDI guitars you have one that's kind of a smaller version and then you have one that's a full-size um, guitar um, it's the same technology though this pickup system um, so I want to say, you know, even though I have like the GR55, I would say the tracking is probably not much better than that. Um, well, I've always been a GR55 user. Um, it's a great unit, but it's still using that older technology where it has a, a MIDI pickup. Um, this has a MIDI out and it has its own unique connection to it using the, the GK3 um, MIDI pi or, uh, synthesizer pickup. So I of course want something, I don't want that all to go to waste, I want to be able to use this board. So I 
I think finding something that can at least plug right into MIDI to um, use the sounds that come with the GR55. So I don't know if my pickup's going bad or what, but uh, the, G, the GR300 is such a noisy patch, you can hear that. And it's funny, it's the only one that seems to be doing that. But the only thing about it, it, it seems to track well, but when you're doing fast lines like... It, it just, there's a, just a little bit of lag. You know what I mean? It's just, just not quite there. And it's funny, you hear how noisy that patch is. Oh my gosh. You hear how noisy that patch is. It, it could be my GK pickup, but I don't know. You know, when you play other, other patches like... This is back to, let's see, there was one. Yeah, right here, here's the. It also has Cosm effects. So these are, I love the, the Roland, the GR55, because it's got almost a thousand sounds in it. And of course, if I get a mini controller I, I want to be able to use all these great sounds. So, that's not a bad one there. Um, so it's got all the Cosm stuff as well. Um, yeah, here's one, it's pretty weird. Yeah. You know, so some of them aren't noisy at all, and they, they actually track pretty well. Something like that. Anyway, but, like, I, you know, I want a controller that I can not let all these sounds go to waste. Uh, there seems to be this difference of, like, um, um, software-based or hardware-based. Now, the software base, to me, it just seems like the software side of it, and, and I don't have all the products, but uh, like the Fishman Triple Play, uh, that I can think of as a software based thing. I just thought it'd be kind of clumsy to, if you have everything software based, you know, to have a laptop and all this kind of thing, and um, versus just being able to plug a MIDI controller in. Uh, the jam stick, like I said, is about $700 or so. Uh, it's probably cheaper now. Um, and like I said, you have a choice between uh, being software-based or hardware-based. Um, the Fishman Triple Play, and kudos goes out to Pete Thorne, and he's got a really great YouTube channel, but he does a full review of the Fishman Triple Play MIDI guitar system. And I had it, but I think I lost my dongle. Um, but it, uh, but he gives a pretty good review of it. I remember the sounds being really well. The tracking is, seemed to be just as good as the tracking on uh, the GR55. Um, but check out, yeah, Pete, Pete Thorne's uh, uh, and, you know, he, check out his his uh, uh, review of the Fish and Triple Play. It's actually pretty good. Like I said, the sounds are great. Um, going a little further, and there was this gentleman here who I think this was not to be confused with the Expressive MIDI Pro, but the MIDI Guitar, I think it's MIDI Guitar 3, maybe they're at Vision Version 3. I need to be able so to here, switch. You yeah, kind of see there that this yeah, the seems trunk. to be a software based. I mean, it seems to track really well. And he's bouncing around a lot of guitar 
to different guitars. He had a uh, breath controller. So, so using the breath control, I mean, you just have a little more control of dynamics. You know, your horn patches can sound like more horn-like, you know, with the breath control. Um, but anyway, I, I haven't played through one, but this does look interesting. Um, I am not sure if, what is the 3 MIDI guitar is available for around 300 Okay, that's not bad. This looks interesting. Uh, and but I don't know if you know if it's still clumsy having to be dependent on you know software you know or computer stuff. Uh, that looks pretty interesting. It looks like a it looks like a pretty good option. Now moving ahead, this is really the instrument that I was drawn to, and that's the MIDI Pro Two. Um, at the expressive and this is from Rob Rob O'Reilly guitars and it's a small little company out of Ireland and this looks really impressive So this has some really cool features. Doesn't have the breath controller. Uh, does have the the button. Um, this other controls. It has this thing called the X Y pad, um, and. Uh, the video that really sold me on it was um, uh, Paul David's video on this guitar. It's called This Guitar Blew My Mind. And he does a great review and demo of it. Um, really quality stuff. He's got a great YouTube channel. Um, in fact, he inspires me to get a better YouTube channel. But uh, this... That's a big... So I would, if you're interested in this instrument, um, I would definitely check out his video. Uh, does an excellent demo of this guitar, and I was very curious about the instrument. So one of our vacations that we took to Ireland, I you know wanted to meet Rob and check out his shop and just see uh, about this guitar. Um, Paul David talked about the guitar and apparently the technology does. The biggest issue is always going to be latency with these MIDI control things. But, but Rob's got something different. He apparently has some sort of fretboard uh, or fret. You know, remember the first video that talked about intelligent frets? Um, this is... Uh, uh, apparently the frets, uh, really the tracking issue is no problem at all. And really all these extra controls are just other avenues to be able to control MIDI devices. It's got like three outputs. So it's got a standard guitar output. And of course it's got MIDI out. Um, but it's got this thing called the XY pad, which is very, very cool, very different. Uh, some some ways you know, additional ways that you can control the guitar and and the sounds and everything. Um, to me, this seems really unique because um, it's got you know it's it's like a regular guitar. So using this thing live in combination with uh, you know MIDI control sounds to me seems like a win-win kind of thing. Anyway, if you go to what Paul Davis is talking about, so he get like I said, this you got to check the video out because he does a great job demoing the thing. He talks about the X Y pad. He talks about right here. Um, there's a, a thing that he calls tap mode, 
which you could actually just tap the frets because the frets are all connected and so there's like zero latency with this thing but check out what you can do when you just tap the notes with the bat with the bats or with the big but there's also the tap mode and this is next level so now we can just play the notes by tapping on the fret and it works really accurately so cool. um cool um i could see using this in my studio for sure uh anyway um i uh on one of my vacations that i took to ireland uh went with my wife and some friends and i went and paid rob a visit So if you've made it this far, I appreciate it. And certainly I hope you got something out of the video. Um, thanks a bunch and see you next time.